CEO. Give me an opportunity, me and my team, to make a difference in Bomet. And I can promise you and pledge that at the end of five years, you can come back right here and see what we'll have been able to do uh, in the period with the resources that have come into Bomet. All right, that was uh, Governor Jess Labosa during the campaign season. And unfortunately, that vision will have to be completed by Dr. Hilary Barchok, who is the Deputy Governor. Mm. Uh, we understand that uh, preparations are underway for the swearing in, but there is no confirmation whether it's this morning or later. Uh, our correspondent um, Martin Kuzge tells us that uh, there is a possibility that that event that was supposed to happen this morning has been postponed. But of course, stay tuned to Citizen TV as soon as um, uh, the preparations are on. We will be sure to inform you on what's happening. But I want us first to look at, take a look at some of the feedback that you've been sending us on Twitter as well as on SMS. If you can uh, take a look at what you've been saying at Citizen TV Kenya with the hashtag uh, Debrek. We have... Uh, takes a while. <laughs> this is uh, Jacob Aber. I send my condolences to family of the late Madam Joyce Laboso and Bumet County residents. I am neighbor from Nyamira County. Rest in peace, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Still on Twitter, Steve, good morning. You say the nation is deprived of vibrant leaders as a result of this cancer menace. The government now needs to declare this staff a disaster and give it attention. Listed continues with finishing innocent and strong Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Engineer Lazaro, Honorable Laboso, one of the women pioneer governors in the country. Very sad to lose such visionary development oriented leader to cancer. It's high time we declare cancer a national disaster, of course, uh, similar to what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Still on Twitter, Daniel, you say, my sincere condolences to the entire family and people of Bomet County. She was a great woman, a great woman leader. May her soul rest in peace. We take a look at SMSs, what you've been saying uh, via 22422. This one takes a while, yeah? Mm -hmm. Hmm, this is uh, Sir Nixon to get up from Kindaruma. It's time there be total awareness and sensitization in our schools, church gatherings uh, on how to avoid or prevent cancer. Rest in peace, Joyce. Still on SMS, uh, Purity, good morning. You say cancer, cancer, cancer. For how long is it going to kill people as we watch? Can cabs go to factories that manufacture food, go to industries that manufacture chemicals and see what is killing us? No one is safe. Tests and chemos will not help. Let's invest on the root cause. All right, Celestine from Nairobi. Gladys Chile, you once said that uh, the cancers are brought about with the pesticides that we are using to weed out in our chambers, and I totally agree with you. Can you, as women leaders there, lobby to have the pesticides and artificial fertilizers removed from our shelves, like all the other international states? Uh, well, is the solution to get rid of them or is it to check the quality? Then Celestine from Nairobi, oh, the same one. Let's go organic with manures. And really, it does not beat sense that people in rural areas are also battling cancer. Cancer is a national disaster. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it's quite a battle that you have to deal with. I now want us to transition to um, the agenda of women in politics. And this is a conversation that has been held several times. And uh, when you elected, when uh, the Bumet residents elected Governor Laboso becoming the third uh, female uh, governor, uh, first governor, it, it, it's, it's an achievement uh, for the women folk. Now, there are issues that have to do with the two-third gender representation that are, is yet to be attained in the constitution. There's a proposal by Punguza Mizigo that we uh, scrap the 290 constituencies and instead have uh, one man, one woman elected at the 47 counties to constitute um, um, a national assembly which is balanced 50-50, if you may say so. Mm -hmm. There is a proposal from your side that you are saying we need 136 women leaders at the national assembly and there's a formula that you're giving on how that can be attained. Is it the right route or is, it, um, uh, is, is there a chance that women can actually fight it on the ballot and get to places like Joyce Laboso got? Okay, I think just before I speak to that, I mm -hmm. think it's important that I say two things that are extremely important, saying from what uh, Bush Mwanga had said. Mm -hmm. First of all, there's a statement that you made that Cecily Karaoke has said she's constructing cancer centers across the country. Mm -hmm. First, that is a very d ridiculous way of dealing with the problem. Mm -hmm. Construction, brick and mortar, does mm -hmm. not deal with cancer. Mm -hmm. It is the testing equipment, it is the personnel who are trained to be able to see you when you go to the hospital and diagnose mm -hmm. or refer you for certain tests in order to detect cancer early. Mm -hmm. So don't tell us about brick and mortar. We already have facilities mm -hmm. 
that have been built. And I know some sub county hospitals that are empty. The brick and mortar has been built because somebody wanted to give out a contract to their friends so that they can earn some money from the tender. Mm -hmm. But they're not really thinking about the actual bottom of the problem, which is we need the equipment. Mm -hmm. So with those spaces that we have, can we spare whatever money we have to buy the testing equipment? And already we have the MTCs, which is a very good progress. Let us do directed training to the nurses and the first primary uh, 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 m m cares people that you meet at the dispensaries who can be able to say, these are the signs that look like you need to have a test for cancer. Right. So it's very important that we go that direction. And then once we've done the, the, the testing, the equipment, the personnel, then the treatment. Mm -hmm. That is very important. So let's stop, about, stop talking about construction. Mm -hmm. It is also important, like uh, was said, and I have heard about it. I also asked somebody, they told me there's a national cancer control policy that has never been implemented. We have an institute that money is not being given to. So that is what Cicely Karyuki mm -hmm. should sit here and come and tell us about. But mm -hmm. not tell us she wants to be, build more brick and mortar. I'm well, sure there are people who can donate buildings. I don't want to be a advocate, to but while on the show, she, she said that uh, part of the challenges were in accordance of securing financing for those centers, because they are supposed to be a cancer centers of excellence in Yeri, Mombasa, Kisi, mm -hmm. that had been marked for construction. Their plan was that uh, the Kisi one would be opened this year, but that is not going to happen but because you know, the resources are not think, available. If cancer is a crisis, mm -hmm. for example, I know in Wasingishu, there are buildings that have already been built by the private sector. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that prevents the government mm -hmm. from buying that so that the, the, the achieving of getting the building is immediate. Get the building that is ready, mm -hmm. buy it, then you're only concentrating on purchasing the equipment okay. and the ready the school, the MTCs. We've got to find a shorter method. Mm -hmm. But if you tell me you start building, then you take several years, then the contractor absconds, and then you start putting, no, we can't do that. Okay. We must become innovative in the way that we think. Another mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. we've also got to begin to think about we've, the issue of uh, food safety has been talked about. Mm -hmm. I'm pushing a national food safety bill uh, at the National mm -hmm. Assembly. Again, we've got to have, uh, instead of having the Agriculture and Food Authority, we should have a national food safety authority so that all the agencies can come together mm -hmm. and be able to say, and we already know, these are things that we don't have to do research on in Kenya anymore. Mm -hmm. the there is already in published in international journals okay. and research that has been confirmed internationally that Roundup causes cancer. Why do we have Roundup on our shelves? We know that we have certain pesticides on our shelves that is also said to cause cancer, but people say, oh no, it is safe provided you wear protective clothing and provided that you, uh, that you only eat the crop after 10 days. Let me tell you, do you expect the ordinary person in my village uh -huh. to be able to buy protective clothing and gloves and a mask? They can't afford it. And then do you expect the people in the village to have the knowledge base uh -huh. to say, oh, I will count seven days before I sell my crop. Remember, the farmers are already suffering. So okay. yes, they will rush and take it to the, the town and be able to sell, and sell it to our people. Sell, sell to so consumers. what we should do, okay. if something is impossible to implement, mm -hmm. if we are not able to use it safely with the ordinary person, get it out of our shelves. Okay, Honorable Shale, I'll get back to you so that you can talk about your bill. But first, um, when you look at um, these proposals, especially for the Punguza Mizigo that feels that, that talks about the cost of um, the wage bill is high because of the legislature and we need to reduce it from there. So do you think the, the proposal that uh, one woman, one man elected at the, county, at, the, at the county level to go to the National Assembly is the solution, or is it possible with the current framework for women to fight it out at the ballot and get to where just got? Sam, there are a lot of things to be considered when we are talking about this. First, allow me to acknowledge that uh, our political leadership over the years have been uh, patron, you know, male-oriented in, in nature. And steps have been made to help or to have the women come up, which to some extent has yielded fruits, and that's why we are celebrating uh, Kina Dr. Laboso and all of us here. Mm -hmm. However, the battle that the male and the female experience in leadership still continues. And sometimes I think it gets too fierce and too emotional mm -hmm. that we actually stop to think. I have kept repeating to this nation, great nation of Kenya, mm -hmm. when we are talking of 
women as leaders who are we really talking about if you are a man then you are talking possibly about your wife you are talking about your sister you are talking about your daughter or you are talking about your mother but sometimes when we talk about these issues of leadership it 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 it, it brings out a kind of a fight that really ought not to exist and in the a, first place. Being a first-time legislator, how is being a woman in politics? How different is that? What have you had to bring to the it table? It calls for what I want to call self-death or death to self as a woman. Because you see, as women, we really care much about what somebody thinks about us, our compact more, the French would say, how we carry ourselves. Uh, we want to be gentle, we want to be meek, we want to be humble, we want to be nice. We want to smile all the time. Mm -hmm. but, but, but in politics, you, you need to die to all that. What I mean is, people can wake up and say things about you that you never imagined. Even the people that you thought were your closest friends who understand you. The moment you step out and you want to po uh, position yourself as a leader and take that position, especially these elective posts, I'm telling you, the society starts looking at you differently. I told you I'm born again, I'm a, I'm, I'm a pastor. But the moment I said, I'm going to get this political seat, some people thought, oh, she's on her way to backsliding. Is it because yeah. you're and a pastor or because you're a woman? Or both? Both. It, it both. You know, it, it's both because you, they feel anybody, any woman in a, a position of political leadership is either a prostitute, you know, somebody <coughs> who has got some miss mm -hmm. in them. And this is what we need to tell other women out there. There is nothing wrong with you becoming a leader and mm -hmm. expressing yourself. In fact, you are earlier question like, do we really have to go the male way to be recognized as leaders? Right. My simple answer is no. And I think what we've just said about Laboso exemplifies it better. And you just have to be you, you just have to stay firm, you have to stay humble, you know, sell the idea because the issue here is women have ideas just like men have and if we can explain the idea mm. let people see the vision and we work towards achieving it the way we do even in our own homes i am a very proud to be a woman you go to some young man in their home uh, in the name of a husband there's nothing exactly. but you start creating things from there so when we look at it from that perspective i'm telling you we are great leaders now coming to your point the 50-50, the Punguza Mizigo thing, I think to me it looks somebody who is really trying to uh, move away from realism. Mm. Because to me, if there is any blessing that God gave us in this country, is the concept of devolution. And earlier on, we had bigger chunks of constituencies. And then the, the, the leaders in question would find it too big and too expanse to, to, to do any meaningful development, to reach everybody in the corner. And this is actually what led Kenyans to thinking, okay, let us have smaller sections, segments of the county, and let us have these resources move there in this manner and in that manner. Now, what I'm saying here is the 50-50 when, say, a governor is a male, mm. the deputy becomes a female. When the governor is a female, like we want many of us to become governors, then the male becomes a deputy. To be honest, it can work. But when it comes to issue of just arbitrarily merging up the constituencies in the name of wage bill, Whenever people are talking about tax paying in this country, I'm so sorry to say that everybody forgets that even also these very, very MPs and they, whoever is elected or nominated like her also pay taxes. Right. You know, so, and then what is also painful about it, it is the women part of the leaders that are thought of, like one of them o openly said abolish the position of the women reps. And here I am here to say today, if there is any leaders who have really tried to transform the lives of people using the little resources that they are getting in this nation, I want to testify, she is here. All it right. is the women rep. So, so mm -hmm. Susan, let, let, let me rope in Sylvia into the conversation. Yes. She's too quiet. Yes, Let's I'm pick it up quiet. from what, yeah. what, <laughs> what Honorable Pamela Odeambo has talked about. <laughs> Dr. Yes. Joyce Lamboso, since she is our exemplary example this yes. morning. Yes. And society needs to get this because I feel like maybe a woman would be here listening to this as well. Mm -hmm. She was married. Yes. To and she married into the Luo community. Yes. A factor that perhaps a male politician would never have had to think about. Yes. Yes. The other women right here behind the scene. We've had this conversation already. How is that pressure that comes from society that? It, 
because as a woman you have married from this tribe yes. you have to go and and, and vie in that place yeah mm -hmm. i think uh, the problems of being in a patriarchal society where then they use that against the women and they don't give us the space mm -hmm. then to be what we can be and i'm sure uh, honorable gladys Cholet will talk about that because she's the one I think she's been affected by you know such a situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but what I, I you can allow me to comment away from your question mm -hmm. is the issue of um, what madame here was talking about the BBI and the space for women right yeah and uh, and I want to say I come from the Wiper Democratic Party uh, I'm nominated from there and we have a situation where our party leader gives space to women and these are the sort of men that we have to have in our society as leaders who can also recognize and give space to women our secretary general is a woman and the party leader and the position of the party was one to reject um, this uh, Punguza Mzigo. Mm -hmm. Not because we don't want to Punguza Mzigo, but because first we have to adhere to the constitution. There's the issue of public participation, which was not achieved in this particular Punguza Mzigo. But they claim uh, that the signatures are an indication that that ha actually happened. Signature is not and a sign went, of public and participation. And they went around doing public consultation. Public. That's what they said. Public participation, in private and get public participation is when you call people mm -hmm. and you Discuss. take their views mm -hmm. and you take a position mm -hmm. based on the views right. of the people. We have to be very clear about this. Mm -hmm. And this is very entrenched in our constitution. Mm -hmm. When I spoke earlier that we have to uphold our new constitution, which is a beautiful document, public participation is very key mm -hmm. to our constitution. So because of that, we cannot look at a document then that is created and you know, forged by a few people. So we have to give the Building Bridges Initiative its time and it's coming to an end. And we see the recommendations because these are recommendations that have come from every okay. county. And it is from that recommendation then we can now begin you to analyze. You say that regardless of the contention that people feel it's not anchored in law, it's, it doesn't have the general acceptance politically? No, no, no. We have to first okay, accept. We have to accept that the president is doing something okay. about our very vicious cycle of mm -hmm. ethnicity, okay. you know, and exclusivity. Mm -hmm. This is what building bridges is about. We are trying to bring a Kenya together mm -hmm. as one, mm -hmm. and we have to give this process the support it requires because it's a fantastic, beautiful step that Kenya has missed out on since independence. Okay. It must be given the space that it requires. Kenyans have to be patient. Mm -hmm. And sometimes Kenyans like to, you know, we, we, we run a lot and we like to politicize things. But All when right. we have good Let's things, uh, we have to stop the politics yeah, of yeah, yeah, yes, and Senator. give them space. Oh, no, actually, I want you to respond to that, even as you update us on what yes. your bill is proposing first, to let's, do. Uh, let's make a, I think, uh, first of all, I want to say, I recognize and acknowledge and respect all efforts mm -hmm. to amend the Constitution. Right. Whether it's the Punguza Musigo Initiative, mm -hmm. whether it's the BBI, mm -hmm. whether it's the Boschelet Bill, whether it's the Dwale Bill that had attempted at some point and failed, or the Florence Mutua Bill. Mm -hmm. Florence Mutua is also pushing a bill, which is going to come to light very soon. Sure. But I think what we should be asking ourselves, first, let me speak to Punguza Musigo. Mm -hmm. Punguza Muziko is a very nice terminology. It resonates with every Kenyan mm -hmm. and resonates with me. I would love to Punguza, punguza Muziko mm -hmm. and it's something we must do. It's actually Muziko. But then Muziko. Mm -hmm. But let us not uh, uh, mislead Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Where is the Muziko? Okay? And I'm using uh, my uh, 2015 data that we got. Even if a, a few sentences, a few uh, percentages have changed, mm -hmm. it is still pro rata, more or less the same. Mm -hmm. So we say that in the 2015 report was that 62% of our budget was with the executive, total government budget. 12% mm -hmm. with the counties, mm -hmm. now it's 15. That's what I'm saying, it's moved by a few points. Uh, 20 to the consolidated fund services. 1.1 at that time to the judiciary, it's increased, I think, to 1.3, and 1.7, 1.5 uh, to parliament. It was 1.2, it's moving to 1.5, 1.7. Mm -hmm. Now, the question we should be asking ourselves, where is the, you said Muzigo or Mizigo? Mizigo. Where is the Mizigo? <laughs> <laughs> the Mizigo mm -hmm. is in the executive, mm -hmm. which has at least 82% of the total budget. Mm -hmm. So if we are going to reduce Mizigo, mm -hmm. let us go where the Muzigo is. All these in commissions with huge salaries, three vehicles, five bodyguards, uh, sitting allowance of up to 80,000 shillings per city, I think that's where the Muzigo is. And you as appears to be in you know, Mizigo. No, 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 no. Then hold on. I've, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's very good to get. I, I don't mislead Kenyans. Uh -huh. I'm very factual about what I say. Uh -huh. So, in the, uh, that's what I've said. In principle, I like Punguza Muzigo. But don't tell me the Muzigo is in parliament. Okay. The Muzigo is across the board. 
my proposal is yes we must increase representation mm -hmm. because it's an equality issue it's a human rights issue that we must have more women in parliament but mm -hmm. because i'm alive to the fact that we must punguza mizigo i have simultaneously put in uh, legislative proposals mm -hmm. In other acts of parliament, there is a public service, there is a salaries and remuneration commission. Mm -hmm. That is where you put the salary changes, not just for parliament, across the board. Mm -hmm. And include everywhere, including the judiciary. I believe that we, incre we must increase the number of judges. We, we must have the number of women that is required by law. But then we go where the biggest uh, numbers are. Like the CSS, for example, mm -hmm. was it necessary? That's one muzigo we must remove. On and so, four times, four times the gender bill, the Twitter's gender bill uh, flopped. Do you believe that your bill will do? Yes, because succeed? mine is mine is different, and that is why. And this is what we say. And I know that uh, what the Punguza Muzigo bill has done is resonate also with the MCAs by telling them, we'll give you the word development fund mm -hmm. and we'll not give it to the, to the Consumer Development Fund. If you remember, the national government, the, the CDF was declared unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. The Affirmative Action Fund was declared unconstitutional because it was purporting to undertake national duties mm -hmm. at a county level. Mm -hmm. And it was thereafter that they amended it and called it the national government Affirmative Action Fund and the National Constituency Development Fund. Right. So he's fooling the MCAs for a bit just to be able to get his bill through it. Mm. And he will succeed. I have a feeling he will succeed. If we, and when, when he them. also, there's something else that is an anomaly. No, when you put, you talk no, about no, your bill? I'm going to talk about my bill in a minute. There's also another anomaly. Uh -huh. The penalty saying that someone must not hold public service and so on after being found with corruption, mm -hmm. you don't put it in the constitution. You put it in the, in the penal code, the criminal procedure code, the civil procedure. If you say how many days it should take mm -hmm. uh, to hear a matter, that is also in other legislation. Mm -hmm. Suppose we Not put a salary in the constitution. Right. When I need to change the salary because of inflation rate, do I have to have another referendum? Mm -hmm. It's going to cost us 40 billion to have a referendum. Mm -hmm. That is what it costs. And that's another thing Kenya is, if it is Punguza Muzigo, is going the referendum route the right way. And... Um, and also, when we speak, and I will, uh, and, and remember, our constitution-making process was the most consultative constitution-making process in the world. Mm -hmm. I would expect BBI to have had a group of experts to go and look at our our, our, our consultations in Bombers and say, what is it that we find wrong with our constitution? Then, based on that begin to make corrections. Because mm -hmm. Kenyans have just spoken with the problems they had with it, even as far as bombers, mm -hmm. the contentious issues. Mm -hmm. But when you take purport to get people, a few people, to walk around the country, purportedly to get views, you can't tell me that that is representative of what Kenyans want. Going to my bill. Right. Like I've said, my bill, on the face of it, may look like it is raising the wage bill. But when people understand, and I know they are going to understand when we go to public participation, that the, B, the wage bill, even if we got a read of the whole of parliament, you're only saving 1.5%. What happens? Everything is still, the huge B, wage bill is still at the executive. So my proposal is, allow us to increase the number of women. But at the same time, I support my two legislative proposals that one deals with issues of corruption, mm -hmm. two deals with issues of salary, and deals with issues of fast-tracking cases by making sure we increase the number of judges, change the laws relating to how fast you can hear matters. Then that way we'll deal with the issues, and these were issues that Kenyans had raised during the constitution-making process. Let, let, so let, let me ask you a question, be, about Shere. And, and in, 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 in closing it all up, okay. I am open to the fact that I believe in listening to people. Mm -hmm. And I believe that maybe with all these three, four initiatives that are out there, mm -hmm. we may it may be a chance that we actually listen to Kenyans and come to a middle ground let, and let, even draft a new Let, let me ask proposal. you this question. You can differ if you think it's not correct. This is uh, Citizen TV's assessment of your bill that the number of elected women representatives will rise from 47 to 136. 136. Nominated MPs from 12 to 22. Elected MPs remain uh, 290. That is uh, from the national, mm -hmm. I mean, from the constituencies. The and senators. now the total number of uh, members of the National Assembly will be 448. Is that correct uh, no, assessment that's not, of that's your not bill? A, that's not a correct assessment. I was mm -hmm. saying currently we have 47 women representatives. Right. What I'm saying is that do away with that. Mm -hmm. And instead, 
create, break them down in constituencies to bring it to 136, mm -hmm. which means you'll meet the immediately mm -hmm. the one third requirement and how by the many constitution. Remain and the, then are the, are the we give up. Uh -huh. We give up. Remember, mm -hmm. they've been they've been nominating more women uh -huh. to to top up. Mm -hmm. So there is also another number mm -hmm. that is nominated. We give that up so that we only leave nominations mm -hmm. to special interest, either people with disabilities or how youth. many elected members of the National Assembly from Sorry? the constituencies? Sorry. The number of elected members of the no, National Assembly. No, we remain at 210. 290. Yeah, I'm sorry, 290, uh -huh. and then add the 136. Uh -huh. and what about, have, uh, and then the only 22. other positions will be six that are being added uh -huh. for the nominations for special seats. Uh -huh. On the, in, the, in the Senate, at the moment at the Senate, uh -huh. we have, we go to elections, we elect only three women. What do we do? We nominate another uh, 18 plus another three. Uh -huh. What in fact happens is, and she knows, she, we, we, are, we, we have the right number of women in the Senate, mm -hmm. but they have no right to vote. Because the voters' delegation. Because the voting, you vote by delegation. She is not a head of delegation. So what is the point of putting women in Senate who do not weigh in on the views of women? So what we should do, what we should do is, in my proposal is that we do away with the nominating women into Senate. Instead, allow every county mm -hmm. to field two, two senators, one male, one female. We so will achieve 50-50. That as in the same four. as the Kuru Accords bill immediately. So senators move from, the, from 67 to 100? Yes. That's a lot. So the question I want to ask you, uh, if that proposal goes through, do you think it's going to improve but the But I will quality? save it by reducing other people in the executive. <laughs> okay, let's talk about parliament for now. <laughs> do you think it's going to change the... Um, did I just say gonna? It's going to change <laughs> the quality of legislation uh, in parliament with so many numbers just for the sake of representation. Will that be reflected in what we uh, get out of uh, parliament? I think if she'll allow me to answer that. Remember, <laughs> weighing in on legislation, <laughs> weighing in on legislation, uh -huh. women today, uh -huh. if there is a bill that supports women or people with disabilities or youth, it never passes through because we do not have the requisite numbers okay. to weigh in on legislation. I, I wanted to consider that based on the fact that the executive is about 20 cabinet secretaries. Is there quality in numbers or is, just, or is it just a feeling of we are represented? Um... Yes and no. Mm -hmm. Allow me to say that. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to voting, the final decision making, the numbers will count. But when it comes to contribution or uh, what a representative does, mm -hmm. it may not necessarily uh, need the numbers. Now, the difference between us in parliament and then the, the executive, the, 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 the CSS that you are talking about, 20, mm -hmm. if you look at one CS mm -hmm. with the number of other executive staff that they have, mm -hmm. it is enormous. Mm -hmm. And therefore, <laughs> this is why we are saying, if we are talking about Punguza Mizigo, mm -hmm. then it is good to be honest mm -hmm. with Kenyans and say, where exactly is the Mizigo? You see? But the case of the MPs, let me tell you, I am taking care of a whole county with eight constituencies and 40 wards. Mm. And if you look at even what the PSC gives me because of that small percentage of what we have, to be able to facilitate people whom I'm working with on the ground, I'm telling you it is a, a headache mm -hmm. because you now don't know who to give what and all the time this notion that uh, MPs have a lot of money always but make you, them complain. You, one MP, but, but one yes, million yes, people. Yes, but yes, you are not alone in the same county yes. there is CDF Listen, with all your colleagues. Uh, no, no, let's let's take one seat at a time. Uh -huh. You see there is the CDF yes. and that's where we are saying uh -huh. in fact the issue of Punguza, uh, Kupunguza Mizigo there is a lot that we honestly need to do as Kenyans. If we, the main aim for example is to have all our children go to school and learn and acquire certain skills which we think are relevant to us as a nation. Mm -hmm. Then, me as an, an edu educationist, I am a teacher by profession mm -hmm. and a strategic manager. Mm -hmm. I don't see the need of, for example, <coughs> creating small, small centers of facilitating education. For example, the president, there is uh, the presidential Basari Award or, or something like that. There is the governor's, you know, there is a CDF for Basaris. There's every small, small pockets of money distributed all over the place. Mm -hmm. Supposing we go the Denmark way and decided what we are going to do, we are going to build standard schools mm -hmm. with standard equipments. All we need to do now and with standard trained teachers, mm -hmm. what we need to do, tell our children, wake up, go to school. So, Sylvia. so what we are saying here is, mm -hmm. 
if you look at all these bills, I've not really critically studied uh, Madame Soleil's bill, mm -hmm. and I may not be able to speak much to it. But I think the question here may not be the numbers. Some of the things that we actually discuss as Kenyans are mere perceptions, which are not based on facts. She has given us very nice statistic here, mm -hmm. and you see where the problem actually is. There is a lot of duplication of activities in our nation, Oh, and this spreads our money <coughs> so thin, right. and as we create many loopholes where this money is disappear, and we end up not getting what we wanted to achieve. Okay. And therefore, if we are talking about the Constitution and, and this amendment, mm -hmm. I want to echo what she has just said. Get this right. Mm -hmm. When we were amalgamating this Constitution, it was acknowledged that there mean? were some small pockets mm -hmm. of it that needed an amendment. Mm -hmm. As we talk here today, I am sorry to declare that I think Mm -hmm. Kenyans have totally weird off that and we are bringing to other issues in. that right. are just taking us round round which are according to me non-issues. So Sylvia, then just picking it up from what Honorable Gladys Boshile has said from her bill then, what one might ask is that, is it, does that mean that women want to be handed over to seats or can we win at the ballot? Um, this, this is to first, the ballot, my bill yeah. goes to the ballot. There Hers no goes to the ballot. I've not studied her, her bill in depth so I, I can't also speak to it. Mm -hmm. okay. But what I know is that um, Women have capacity, even at the battle. The problem is the space not being given to us by the men. Mm -hmm. But can we hold our own? If you look at the order paper in the Senate today, the women actually are extremely vibrant in terms of passing laws, motions, and statements. So can Kenyans appreciate that the women are also working for them? Mm -hmm. We have a template that has been set by Dr. Laboso as a CEO of a county, because that's what they are. Mm -hmm. She has demonstrated to her people, even a woman can. So what will stop the people of Bomet mm -hmm. from giving more opportunities to women? So we can hold our own. We don't necessarily need to be dished out, but we are in a space where we need our men to appreciate that. Then we don't get mad slang and all those things that Madame here was saying, because really sometimes when we put ourselves out there, mm -hmm. what you get is the mad slinging as opposed to the appreciation of good leadership. Kenyans need to wake up. Kenyans need to become politically mature and okay. appreciate that even women mm -hmm. can do it. All because right. we have demonstrated it in parliament. If you look at the bills that are passing, majority actually women's bills, and touching on you know, those sensitive things in mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I believe we can hold our own. We don't necessarily need to you know, be handed over the way it is made to sound, because that is derogatory. <laughs> it's like I've been handed over. By the way, okay. my nomination is out of merit. I'll, I'll it's not right. a handover. Just to modify her statement a bit. <laughs> okay. Even Quickly. that expression of given space, yeah. Yeah. let's put it this way. Yes. Can the Kenyans, we agree, to levelize mm. the playground Even in, in the politics. Playing field. What we mean here is, if violence can be eliminated mm -hmm. and people listen to sense, what has Pamela has to say about Migori County? What has this other male counterpart has to say? What is the idea? How does she want to achieve it? How does she want to work with the people through it? Then, right. mm -hmm. if that can be given a chance, mm -hmm. then I believe there are women in this nation that you have never seen and you've never known. Okay. Or, or, but they are great warriors, great yeah, leaders. And, and let me or, just right, Dr. Pamela, just, just, a just before you do, we, let's take a look at uh, what we've been saying on Twitter as well as on SMS in regards to this topic. That is that uh, Citizen TV Kenya, uh, Sam Gituku, this is uh, Obeto from Eldred. You're saying that the passing of, the, well, this is a different, uh, this is on a different matter, but all the same. Uh, the passing of Dr. Jace Labos is another big blow to Kenya. Setting up cancer centers is a necessity in our counties. This will help deal with, the ca with this cancer thing. Remember, settling, setting up does not only mean putting up buildings with neither equipment nor qualified personnel uh, to offer services as it's happening in public hospitals and schools. Still sticking on SMS double two four double two, um, Veronica, you say cancer awareness um, is critical areas in terms of constipation, um, drinking five glasses of water per day, emotional distress to talk about issues in your life with someone else. Number three, lack of sleep, need to have minimum or close to about eight hours. And number four, physical activity, wake up and exercise. I think she's very is just giving a list, mm -hmm. a breakdown of, of some of the things, things you can, can do at do. home. All right, Professor Ben Omwando, uh, do you have an SMS on uh, women in politics? Um, because uh, Professor Ben Omwando on Twitter says, um, well, this is Moriungi. Kindly uh, ask Shelley what will two senators be doing in Parliament just because they want just because they want women in in, in Parliament? In Parliament, mm -hmm. that only will make her Ongeza Mzigo <laughs> Bill die. 
Well, th 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 that's what um, <laughs> they are saying. <laughs> Professor Ben Mwando says that a gender problem is a simple one. Let nomination and women repre woman representative be a one term seat. I am sure the 47 women, if they can identify one constituency, each at least 20 will be elected. And this adds the number to 67. Furthermore, we are improving. That's someone who thinks about it should be progressive. You nominate uh, Senator Kasanga here. Uh, next time she goes and runs for, for parliament, or whichever seat, whether it's at the constituency or the county, uh, she gets to the house. <laughs> I hope that's the plan. Wish you well. <laughs> <laughs> and it is no, no. I think the, and also one is not, it should be noted. My bill is only for 10 years. 10 years. Yeah, just but a watershed period. But, just it, but it has women. a possibility of extension of another yeah. 10 years. And remember, should, we have one MP to 1 million persons in Kenya because we have 45. <laughs> million Kenyans. So you have to remember it's okay. not the same as the ministry as she puts it. Yeah. <laughs> but let me tell you, I know they will begin to have. understand no, it. No, we need to close. Yes. When, when it comes to the work that women do in parliament, uh -huh. you really need to spotlight on some of those things. And this is where I call on the media mm -hmm. that sometimes we are missing we are missing what we need to celebrate and show Kenyans mm -hmm. that is working, that is true cause. Mm -hmm. Senate just passed the mental health amendment bill. And you know how mental she health was yeah, which, mm -hmm. which I have mm -hmm. sponsored. Right. And you know mental health is a conversation that is not it easy is to have. But one thing I also want to say to Kenyans and in regards to cancer, mm -hmm. when you look at that policy, like I said, it's a beautiful policy. Mm -hmm. There's a part of it that speaks to the role that the Kenyan should play. Okay. As much as the government and the county governments have their roles to play, mm -hmm. the Kenyan themselves have a role to play. Voters and one place. is to speak about cancer, you have to come out. You have okay. to speak about it because mm -hmm. that's where we begin to take data. We have to take, uh, you know, statistics. Secondly, right. they have to come out for tests. Mm -hmm. Testing can be done. You know, research can be done, and that can also help, you know, the national and the county governments to work. And that's right. a message to the Kenyans that they need to come out and speak about it. Quite right. clear yeah. on it. Se Senator mm -hmm. Sylvia Kasanga nominated Senator, uh, as well as uh, doc Dr. Pamela Odiambo from Igori County, uh, Gladys Boshley from Wasingishu. Of course, uh, someone was asking about Gladys Wanga that uh, she left before answering his <laughs> yeah. question. <laughs> We're glad it's longer had to rush somewhere, but we thank you all uh, for making time for us to remember Jess Labosin, of course, talk about that very important conversation about uh, women and the political space. Uh, back in a moment to speak about Engage. What's Engage. The today? So today, Willis Saburu, given what's been happening within the country, they want to take a look at how to handle grief, mm -hmm. loss. Mm -hmm. Is there a healthy way to go around it? So Willis Saburu will be having that conversation just a little bit on the other side of the commercial break. This is Daybreak. Stay with us.